Hi, this is Charlie Montefiello from BlueBearFlutes.com. Uh, today, making the second of our video series about the different hertz frequencies of uh, flutes that were being requested flutes be made into specific hertz and intonations. The last video we made was rather lengthy on how um, each of these hertz frequencies and resonance ideas have come about. And this video is simply on tuning flutes to said hertz frequencies. Now, uh, you probably have seen a couple of our other videos, or at least if you haven't, uh, you know they're around, there's a bunch of them. Um, we've made an A flute in a video before. However, we have a video series of making different flutes and different keys. In that very video series, we usually tune everything to 440 just for the sake of being standard. Um, but, uh, or rather, however, I'm trying not to say but, I don't know if you guys knew that or not. But anyway, however, uh, makes a nice little lead into another conversation. Uh, what we're going to be doing today is just taking these flutes that are generally my A flutes, flutes that are going to be tuned to A, and we're going to tune each of the three of them, uh, each one of the three, to a different hertz frequency, being 440, 432, and 528 hertz C. And it'll be a lot easier to see how we do that uh, with the last one, whenever you look at the sheet and look at the tuner and what I'm going to tell you. So, hold your questions and applause to the end of the video, and this one will be a little bit quicker. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at this and see how we're going to tune it. This one is going to be our subject for the 440 tuning. Take a look at uh, what 440 tuning encompasses. That's where A is at 440, C would be at 523.25. Uh, we have D would be at 587. The next one would be E at 659, G at 783, and A at 880. This is known as equal tempered tuning or equal tempered scale. Once again, one of those terms that a lot of people like to throw out there so that they, you know, are communicating with the correct jargon with us. But I don't use equal tempered. Uh, tuning references very often unless I have to talk to people about that specific thing. So uh, there are other considerations with respect to tuning. Uh, but anyway, we're going to do the 440A. We're going to use this tuner and if you look I had it set on 432 and all I need to do, if you see this over here, most tuners have a system of doing this. Many of you know that I use the, uh, the little uh, Android tuning app known as G-String. It's changed names and a few other things and I should really have contacted these people about advertising. It's just the one that I picked out of a hat to use and uh, it works for me. So if you're using a G-String tuner, if you go down to the bottom, if you have the updated version, there's a little drop down menu. You click on it, it'll bring up the option for orchestral tuning and in orchestral tuning you can set it to 440, 432, 528, you know, whatever you need to do. Uh, so this one is now set to 440, and let's see what it sounds like. The light on the left means it's flat. The light in the middle means that I'm speaking almost perfectly in tune. No, I'm just kidding. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shave the bottom of this flute off just a smidgen so that it'll come up to 440. Y'all hang tight and listen to my machines making their noise. So anybody see what key those machines were in? Probably not because... Jesse probably sped up the video. <laughs> Almost perfectly in tune, just a smidgen. So let's see where we're at now. Right on the money, how about that? So the next thing we need to do is tune the C note, which as looking back on that reference sheet would be around 523.25 hertz. If you've set your tuner to A440, and you are comfortable ignoring the ideas like I do of equal tempered scale tuning or any of those other words. Um, if you just want to tune your flute to 440A like many other people do, then uh, the next note is going to be C. You don't have to do anything to the tuner. It's already set to 440A and then you just go about your day of tuning the rest of the flute. Looks like it went a little flat since I started talking. So that C is not in the middle here where it needs to be. What I'm going to do, as most of you know, is I'm going to use a burning tool 
to change the size. I'm going to enlarge the size of this hole, which I've just done. Went a little bit sharp. Let me see. Sometimes it's because the hole is a little warm. Really close to, sh to perfectly in tune there. It is going a little bit sharp now. So, what I'm going to do is set this guy down and use him for my 528 hertz flute. And I'm going to go back and retune the bottom of this guy so that he is 440. Probably going to be some heated discussion on a blog somewhere as to whether or not I did that on purpose. So that C needs to be a little larger, but not too much. It does make a good opportunity for uh, teaching, though, about the differences between the hertz, the tunings, and what you can do with one flute and then you need to go and do it with a different flute. Perfect. Just a little bit on that one. Let's see if that was enough. Probably not. Nope, a little bit more. Just a smidgen more. Any of you that are making flutes and you're using this as a reference, keep in mind when there is smoke inside of the flute, if you're using a burning tool method of enlarging the holes like I do, um, if there's smoke inside of the flute chamber from the wood burning, then it will cause the flute to um, go a little bit flat and may not play for a minute or two and that's because uh, the smoke is more dense than air is. So, going back to this. The E needs to be a little bit sharper, a little bit larger hole. With the fingerings and that makes it sharper. perfect. So the next one needs to be a lot sharper. I don't even know if sharper in this particular Meaning is the way you would say it. I believe it would be more sharp, but almost. Let's see what the next note. So they're both quite flat. Uh, coincidentally, I went ahead and put up another burning tool on there. You can get an idea what the holes look like. get an idea where we're going with that. These two top holes need to be a little bit larger than what they are, larger than my quarter inch burning rod that I was using. Keep in mind the tip of my burning rod is tapered, so uh, especially these bottom two holes are probably not uh, a quarter inch, they're probably just a little bit smaller, somewhere between three sixteenths and a quarter. Other flute makers that make as many flutes as we do may use a different method of tuning their flutes. 
they may have a guide or a gauge that they go by and set the um, the settings at a specific uh, hole pattern and then it's basically uh, as big or small as it's ever going to be. Does that mean that each and every one of their flutes turn out uh, exactly in tune? I don't know. And that leads me back to the question of should I tune my flutes while it's 72 degrees outside? Uh, once again, I don't know. I just know that the reason we do these is we like you know, we, we do things the way we do is we like to tune each of them individually and make sure that they're exactly where we say they are. Um, so, of course, you could always pick back up on the other end and um, just have a system of checking them at the end of their production line, but I like to, like I say, tune and check each one of them at the same time. And that's where we're at. So, having talked plenty about that, let's go ahead and uh, enlarge these next holes more smoke in the end of the flute almost, boy that's close alright If you've noticed, um, bringing the G up uh, actually brought the A a little sharper as well. Something to consider. All right. I went ahead and tuned the G and the A while I was at it. So that guy is a 440A. I'm going to mark it so that I won't forget and we'll go on to the next one. Okay, so next we're going to go ahead and make the uh, 432 hertz flute. And if you notice, I've got a little calibration button here. See where it says 440? Then if I run it down to 432, that sets the note A at 432 hertz, making each one of the other notes you know, equally spaced on that bell curve of, you know, what 432 is. The next note will be um, 513C, 576D, E is at 647, G is at 769, and A again at 864. Uh, so that's what 432 hertz tuning with equal temperament, <laughs> uh, that's what that's all about. So we've got a flute that its fundamental note, the bass note, all holes covered, is already 432A. We'll be very careful is where it needs to be. Let's see. Blow the smoke out of it again. Almost. that one too by the way and part of that one now let's see where those notes wound up Top two are really flat. Uh, the E there is getting close. Let's see what it looks like now. So the E's good. A and the G are a little on the flat side. Let's see what those guys look like. Almost.
I bet the G is probably right on it. The A is almost there. Let's see where we're at. I'm going to still get that one a little closer. Let's see that top note. Just a smidgen on those two. Now many of you have noticed probably that I go back over the scale from bottom to top after I um, tune one note, like say the bottom note, I tune the next note, which is C, uh, in this case, and then the next note, which is D, I go back and play through the scale each time. The reason that I do that is because uh, there are times and instances, say for example, uh, temperature changes in the flute itself, not the not the ambient temperature outside, which is, you know, variable of course too, but the flute itself, when the holes are hot from my burning rods, uh, those hot holes are in excess of 200 and something degrees, and they change the temperature of the outside air. So I usually blow through them to cool them off just really quick. I mean, it's just a simple quick breath to cool them off so that they're back down to whatever the ambient temperature is outside, or at least close by, so that they affect the temperature of the air going through them a little less. I know that gets confusing. Anyway, uh, we'll go ahead and mark this one as a 432. So, uh, I'll set the two of them side by side and you can kind of see what they look like. This guy here is our 440. This is our 432. And there's not a whole lot of difference between them. And the differences are mostly the length of the flute. I can show you that down here. Lining the holes up together. The 440 is, of course, a higher tone than 432 is. Therefore, the... Um, length of the flute is a little different, but getting those notes right on the money is uh, is critical. There are some differences in size of the holes, as you will see when it comes to the 528 flute we're going to work on now. So the bottom note, let's go ahead and change our tuner back to where it belongs. As I told many of you, if C on the scale is at 528 hertz, um, which I'm going to pop a little piece of paper over here to show you. <laughs> 528 hertz C, if you look right above it, A is at 444. Okay, so we did all that. Anyway, what I'm going to do is go ahead and tune this guy up 4 hertz to 444A, which is where C is at 528. Sounds like I may have got some dust in there. It's a little bit on the flat side still, as you would expect. I'm going to sand it off and go from there. So, let's see. Sound of my tools. That last one is the sound of my rotary slash Dremel type tool that I use to clean the inside of it out. A at 528 hertz C. There we go. So that's the first note. Let's see what the next one looks like. a tiny bit sharp. I have to do my magic on that hole in just a second. Let's see what the next note looks like. That one too. So the top notes are flat. Bottom notes are just a smidgen sharp. Give me 30 seconds. So that's the big burning tool. It's our 5 sixteenths rod. Most of our flutes have holes. The fingerings are usually between a quarter and 5 sixteenths. Smaller flutes have smaller holes. Larger flutes usually have larger holes. 
And then I went ahead and put my 3 16 rod up there because um, I needed to make these holes just a tad smaller. Chances are many of you are at home right now scratching your head thinking, how do you make a hole smaller with a smaller burning tool after you've made it large with a larger one? Well, that is a secret, isn't it? The D needs to be just a smidgen bigger. A little bit bigger yet. See where that took us. And of course, the next one's quite flat. Let's see here. I think that's got it. So let's step back and take a look at them. Okay, so what we have here are three flutes that have been each meticulously tuned so that they are uh, to their proverbial scales as they need to be. In the bottom of them I've written 440A, 432, and 528 hertz um, so that I know which one is which. And of course uh, the next step I think would be to play them. I'll go ahead and give you a little sample of what they sound like here. say we're going to go ahead and put some finish, our little bare design on the back of it, and uh, oil and wax them as we do with most of our flutes. And then from there, um, we're going to have a flute that is definitely ready to test against another to see which one of these scales and or tones we like the best. And uh, that's going to be our next video. I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. There's a lot of information, of course, and a lot of things to consider because we are actually making these flutes tuned to a specific key right now and uh, we need to make sure that we follow along and, and do that as well as tell you why and how and all that crazy mess uh, which there's a lot more information about some of that on the last the first video we made uh, the next video we make is just basically playing the flutes and getting some ideas of what uh, what they sound like so once again Charlie Mato Tuyella uh, signed out for BlueBearFlutes.com. I hope you guys have enjoyed this and definitely look forward to hearing from you and seeing all of you guys out here again and gals on YouTube. Y'all take care.